Welcome to session 20 on absolute maximum shear stress. In this session, we will have an opportunity to discuss and show how to find conditions of triaxial stress. In other words, we're going to be taking a general state of stress and then finding the principal stresses. In the second portion, we will be looking at how we use more circle to calculate absolute maximum shear stress. And in the third part, we'll look at some structural examples where we can use more circle to calculate absolute maximum shear stress. And these last two parts, well actually, yes, these last two parts are related to what we've already done in terms of calculating the in-plane maximum shear, but now we're going to be looking at the absolute maximum shear stress, which involves taking into account the three-dimensionality of these material elements that we have under stress. So if we, we go back to one of our earlier sessions and just recall that we can describe a state of stress in terms of six parameters, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau xy, tau xz, and tau yz. And maybe you're getting tired at this point of seeing this diagram, but the sigma x comes out of the x face and goes in the x direction. Tau xy comes out of the x face and goes in the y direction. That's how these subscripts are set up. Tau xz is on the x face and comes out in the z direction, in the positive z direction. And we can do the same thing for the top and for this, this front face. And of course, there are uh, corresponding stresses on these other faces, that, the other three faces, that um, do not currently have them drawn, okay, for, for simplicity, okay. And we also recall that we can represent the state of stress or the state of stress on the material element in terms of a tensor or the, the Cauchy stress tensor. And often you'll see it written out as sigma x, tau xy, tau xz, tau yx, sigma y, tau yz, tau zx, tau zy, sigma z. Okay, like that. So these six elements spread in this tensor appropriately. So that's the general depiction of, of stress on a material element in 3D. And it turns out that you might start with this type of stress on a 3D element, or we might start with it. And we can, just like we've done in 2D with our planar elements, we are able to rotate right, this element to get a different set of stresses that are still associated with that same point. And it's a tensor so that as we change the orientation or as we transform the, <clears throat> the state of stress, we are still able to preserve the information. Now, with a general state of stress in 2D, we could rotate about one axis and be able to depict another state of stress. In 3D, we can do a similar thing. In fact, we can depict a, a state of stress at an arbitrary set of angles. Okay, so a <clears throat> reoriented or sliced element, right? Just like we were slicing in 2D, we could take a slice in 3D and we can still come up with states of stresses on that uh, sliced face or on a rotated element. It turns out that there is an orientation that will only have normal stresses, and this is called uh, a condition of triaxial stress. And this is probably not too surprising because, as we discussed last time, when we get into a state of principal stresses for a 2D element, all the shear stresses go to zero. And we've now been able to do this uh, using using more circle. So there is an orientation of triaxial stress where we have only normal components, okay? only principal stresses. And so if we're drawing this box, and maybe it's related to this box, we can say, well, 
there exists some orientation that I have a sigma 1, a sigma 2, and a sigma 3 with no shear stresses. And in its tensor form, we fill out the remaining sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 along the main diagonal, as you see here. Okay. Now, in reality, on the exams, uh, we won't make, well, how do you put this? We, it, it can be very complicated, and I guess I'll show you the next slide, to go from a general state of, of, of stress with sigma x, tau x, y, tau x, z, and if, and if uh, th these terms are non-zero, it is not trivial to, to calculate out what sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 should be. Okay, But using a, a computer and uh, actually probably a calculator too, um, we can calculate what are called the invariants and the eigenvalue problem. So what it's saying is that we can set up a problem where this i1 is one invariant, invariant and sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, these are going to be the same, okay? And the I2, similar thing. This, I guess I should say the summation of sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z are going to be the same. Same thing with I2, same thing with I3, okay? And when we then set it up in this equation, all right, which is related to the eigenvalue problem and don't worry, you don't have to know this. This is kind of for your good to know file at this point. Um, but if you want to know more, there are some links here that, that kind of explain um, this process of taking a determinant of a, of a special uh, linear algebra expression to get something that has these invariants and then allows us to solve or puts us in a position to solve for the roots of this uh, polynomial equation, right, to the third power. I1, I2, I3 are, are givens if we have a given with a, with a state of stress, and what we would be solving for are sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, right? So you can't exactly use the quadratic formula, but there are different techniques to be able to solve with sigma for, for the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 embedded in this, this sigma. And um, and that's what you have an opportunity to do in, in now uh, for, for, this, uh, for this session. Um, we can also calculate the maximum in-plane shear stresses okay, associated with these principal stresses. So this is, what's this saying? Saying that if you were to take this element that had sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 on it, you could rotate to get a tau 1, 3, a tau 2, 1, and a tau 3, 2, right? So going from a state of principal stress to being able to go and look at uh, states of having maximum in-plane shear stress, okay? So here's, here's an example where we'll find the principal stresses uh, for a condition of triaxial stress. Okay, this element is actually under a similar state of stress or the same state of stress that we described in the last session. We have sigma x equals 100 megapascals, sigma y equals 50 megapascals, tau x y equals 10 megapascals, all right? Not all the elements we dealt with in the last session had this state, but this is one of the states we looked at. And so uh, what we're going to try to do, oh, and I guess I should say that the other stresses are zero. We're going to attempt to use uh, the invariance of the eigenvalue find the principal stresses or solve the eigenvalue problem just, or maybe not just, but using uh, Python, using a computer, okay? Now, do you have to do that here with the computer? No, because this is actually a 2D state of stress and we could use more circle like we did last time to figure out uh, sigma one and sigma two, right? The principal stresses. But I thought this was a good example because what we're gonna do is essentially use this this fancy new formula or these new uh, techniques, all right, to kind of check that what we did when we were calculating the principal stress is a 2D using more circle 
to check that we, we did that correctly. And in fact, when I ran that check, there was a typo here. So session 19, I think this said 50 something, uh, just because I did a poor subtraction uh, in my head. So it, I, it's now corrected here and on the slides if you want to download them. So what do you do? Well, the, the CoLab is available and um, we can plug in our sigma x, sigma y, and our sigma z, okay? And we can plug in our tau x, y as well. The other ones are zero. And uh, we then create our tensor, right? So this is probably somewhat familiar. And we um, can then have uh, essentially uh, Python uh, use uh, some techniques in linear algebra to solve the eigenvalue problem. And W stands for the eigenvalues. Okay, again, you don't need to remember this. And V stands for the eigenvectors. The eigenvalues are the magnitudes of the principal stresses, and the eigenvectors are the directions um, or vectors that would be describing the directions, um, the normal faces, or that these um, these eigenvectors or these um, principal stresses would be coming out of. So. This is one way to do it in, in Python. The other way is to implement what we showed on the previous slide with the invariance. So that's been implemented here. I just typed it all out and then can come up with the coefficients for uh, being able to solve the roots and then using uh, a roots uh, solver and NumPy and again, getting the principal stresses. So when you do this, the principal stresses output that you get are, are the same in this particular case, at least to, I think, all the, 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 the many unnecessary uh, decimal places that you see here. Uh, it turns out, though, when you solve some of these other problems, they actually can vary just a little bit. And, you know, that's due to some type of uh, numerical differences in the calculations. Um, for our intents and purposes, I mean, they're going to be they're pretty much identical, okay, to the like one or two decimal places that you know we might want to, to use for these types of calculations. So you're not going to do the questions in this portion by hand. You're going to, or I suggest that you use the given script and essentially plug in the given values, okay, such as for this one, question 20, um, uh, or session 20, question number one, okay, with these values to, to find the maximum principal stress, okay? So, you know, you've got the collab, punch these, punch the given numbers in and, and see what you get. And you might be kind of pleasantly surprised or might be like, oh yeah, that's kind of an intuitive response. And the second question for this session is similar. Okay, now we say, oh, we're going to put all six components of stress equal to a particular value and use uh, the script to be able to calculate and find the maximum principal stress. Okay, so in this first portion, what we've done is essentially lay out the idea that if you have a 3D state of stress, you can orient that element just like we could for a planar element to some type of orientation where we get three principal stresses and the shear stresses are zero. And we've also discussed how we can go about solving and fight figuring out what those principal stresses might be. Thank you.